oh, this makes me so happy. Let me just zoom out just a smidge because my face is very close to you right now. Oh, new camera. Alrighty. Hey everyone, it's the start of a new vlog. As you guys can probably guess considering you guys know my vlog situation. I am going to be vlogging Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This should have been done earlier in the month, but I had... March has been pretty hectic for me, so I only have now had the time to do vlogging. So I thought I'd start this off with a vlog. It is now Sunday, March 14th. I have a brand new camera, which I get to play with. This week's gonna be a another hectic one I have to vlog. I have to upload my Chain of Gold video. I have to finish a lot of my bullet journal stuff. And then I also have to finish um, catching up. I'm behind on editing a couple, several chapters, like at least two chapters this time. So yeah, but right now I am in the middle of watching um, the Card Captor Sakura, which apparently is not a remake. It's a continuation of the series. So I'm very happy about that. And I'm putting my mountainous laundry away from last um, week, which, you know, she's a lot. But yeah, I will update you guys when I get a chance to read a little bit more. I don't know if I'll be able to tonight because like I said, lots of unpacking to do, lots of things I have to fit, figure out for the rest of the week and the rest of the month really. There's a lot of grown up girl things that I should have done a while ago. But I will let you guys know if I get any reading done and update you guys on that. And oh, this makes me so happy. Oh, my camera has a viewfinder. I can tell where I'm in focus. Oh, it's gonna be a good time. But yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. I should start staring at the camera and not at the viewfinder but it is now monday at lunchtime in my work from volunteered self vol voluntold work from home time yeah i just got done eating lunch it's about like now 12 30 so i have a 30 more minutes so i'm gonna take this time to oh i'm so happy about this camera you guys i just love it so yeah i'm gonna go take this time to read six of crows so I don't know if I'll be vlogging this because I need to set up my um, tripod for the lap for the camera that came with it. Or tripod, like selfie stick, whatever you want to call it. I have to set that up but I'm kind of lazy and my room is a mess and I don't want you guys to see that right now. But I will catch up with you guys probably at the end of um, my work day and tell you guys what I thought I'm thinking so far. I, I tried reading a little bit of it and I just thought there's a chat there's a character named Juiced. Joost? Juiced? I'll catch up with you guys when I learn what his relevance is because I've literally never heard of this character. <laughs> I look like a mess. That's okay. So it is now like se almost 7 o'clock. I finished work at 4 and I tried taking a nap and that didn't work out. And I have now have a slight migraine. But that's what happens when you're a uterus holder and your body has to tell you, hey, no, not today. I did get a chance to read a little bit more of Six of Crows during my lunch break, and by a little bit, I mean I read probably up until chapter three. I did read until chapter three, look at me go. I also got a chance to edit a bit of my Chain of Gold vlog. I think I'm only a couple days in. No, I just finished the bit where I opened the box holding the book, so I'm only on Tuesday. <laughs> As for Six of Crows, I'm enjoying it. I can see a little bit more as it's being a darker YA fantasy. There's definitely bits of it where I'm like, oh gosh, that's not what I expected at all but i'm definitely enjoying it i have no idea who juiced is just juiced play a, a big role in the series does he come back does he go away i i need to know i feel like i'm gonna like kaz just because kaz seems like he's gonna be the sarcastic asshole of the group and he kind of leads everything with like not he, he has a weird alina feeling to him so i feel like i'm gonna like him and i'm i'm excited for that bit I'm so livid. There's a line in here where someone's like, oh yeah, the Grisha are their most tri are his most prized possessions. And I got so angry because all the Darkling wanted to do was to free the Grisha from this specific set of kind of like slavery. And Alina said no. Alina decided to save the world and tried to free the Grisha from the Darkling and then left. Be a school teacher and didn't do anything to actually help the Grisha. And the Darkling is now dead. There's so much wrong with that sentence that I just said that I'm so angry about it. The Grisha deserve better than Alina. I'm gonna leave it there. They deserve better than Alina. But I will update you guys a little bit tonight if I can. I think this headache's gonna put me down for a little bit. I do have to edit a bit and I want to write and then I have another novella that I have to finish. That's an arc and that's coming out in like the 24th like I said in my Chain of Gold vlog. So it's very very possible 
that I will get no reading done tonight, but I'm hoping to get some reading done, a little bit more, at least maybe like chapter four. I just need to catch up on a lot of like personal stuff, like editing videos, making social posts again, editing my novel. I am officially almost three weeks behind and I've hit a bit of a writing writer's block, which isn't fair, but at the same time, I don't think I'll be joining um, Pitch Wars. I think given the how my story is going, it, it works, but given kind of the events that are going on, not only in the world, but in my friends' lives, who will be the ones who are going to be beta reading the story, I don't think they'll have enough time to read it and give me a good enough adjustment on what needs to happen to make it work, which is fine, because I'm still technically in the same boat, not in the same boat, in the same schedule of like trying to query my novel come 2020, but I think, I think, why say I think twice? I think I need to take a step back and just write and do things for the betterment of my story and not for reaching this c deadline that hasn't been posted yet uh, to my knowledge it's a little upsetting but i'm i have to choose what's best for my story and what's best for my mental health and i think getting rid of that kind of silent deadline and just trying to figure out bits and giving my friends the time to read it as well is probably the best way for me to get through this little slump but i will update you guys on what happens with that throughout like my next few reading vlogs because I'm sure I'll have a couple more in the future so I will update you guys if I read any more tonight but if not I'll see you tomorrow it is now Tuesday happy St. Patrick's Day I am just got off for my lunch break lunch break I already ate lunch while I was working and now I have to do a couple of things before I can get back to reading I tried reading some more last night, but unfortunately a really bad migraine kind of took me out for the count and I was out by like 10. So now I need to read through Andrew's short story. It shouldn't be that long, I don't think. Send that back to her and then I can go ahead. I'll have to get dressed too because I'm going with my... I'm not going out. I'm going to... A... I'll have to go out to get to my friend's house and get the food that we need. But my friends and I are we're planning on going out to um, enjoy St. Patrick's Day. They're all my friends I studied abroad with a couple years ago to Ireland. Just so you guys don't know that fact about me. Hi, I, hi, my name's Teresa. I talk about my study abroad experience don't stop. That was the plan initially. And then it turned out that with all the coronavirus stuff, we just decided to kind of not go out, not spread any potential stuff that we're carrying. And since all three of us are fairly healthy, we are gonna go to my friend's house and enjoy some um, Irish drinks slash wine, more so wine really, and then some food and just catch up that way. So we're just gonna go enjoy some wine, some Jameson, and food, which I am in charge of tonight. So I need to get dressed for that because I have about like an hour before I have to go get gas and head over because she, my friend lives on in a different town, which is like 20 minutes away. So it's not too bad. Not the greatest either. But yeah, I don't know if I'll get much vlogging done today either. I'll try in like a couple of minutes while I'm reading Andrew's story and probably for Six of Crows. But yeah, I don't even remember where I last left off. I was like trying to read. I think it was, oh yeah, Inej just kind of popped in from the shadows after the whole thing with Big Bollinger and this other guy whose name I'm forgetting. And she's like making commentary and being like, why didn't you tell us? Is that some idea? Blah 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 blah. You know the usual stuff. So I I don't know too much of what my thoughts are because I stopped mid chapter one, and two I'm only on like chapter four or five, so I don't really have very many concrete thoughts. And it is a bit of a higher fantasy, and a bit more of a mature fantasy than the Grishaverse was. So there is a lot of like layering to the world building. But so far I'm just gonna have to say the Darkling shouldn't have died.
Wednesday and I've changed slightly where I'm currently positioned. Hold on, just adjust this. No, this is not one adjust. I need you to be straight. Thank you. Um, I have adjusted where I am starting off this vlog because literally I'm working from home so I literally have not left my bedroom. I did not get a lot of reading done last night. Uh, I ended up going out and by out I mean I went to a friend's house to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. There was literally like three of us in the room. No spreading the coronavirus here and we all washed our hands and you know all the sanitary stuff before anyone tries to come for me in the comments about my going out. So I didn't get a chance to read a lot. I'm reading a bit today. And I just, I feel like genuinely, I feel like the Grishaverse trilogy has jaded me from actually being able to enjoy the Six of Crows. Because I can see a lot of the darkness, I can see more intrigue, and I can see a lot more kind of like grit to this book. But I keep reading it and I just, I am, it's not that I'm losing interest per se, but I'm just not the biggest fan of it. I feel like there's some kind of like gap that my brain is just avoiding or something that's keeping me from really just sitting down and enjoying the book which is a, a pretty much a shame right now because I, I think that this book will be a good like probably a fave of mine for 2020 but right now I'm on like chapter five yeah chapter five or six where they're breaking Matthias out of prison or about to and I'm just not seeing the hype I think that maybe had I read Six of Crows first before the Grisha trilogy I'd be enjoying it a little bit more but also it is a high fantasy so it is very possible that I it's just building up to the things that are going on it's also infuriating to read because literally the Darkling's biggest worry, and I'm not saying the Darkling was like the hero by any means. He is not the best human being for that, but he really just kind of wanted the freedom of the Grisha. And he, even though his means to getting it weren't the best and not necessarily the way to do it, that was what he, what he wanted. There was a lot of faith in that and then he had gotten kind of like turned around and think his methods were no longer sane or like, what's the word, <sighs> ethically okay? But that's how, that's what happened. And then we come, comes along Alina, and Alina's like, no, I want to change it, I want to do this, this, and this, which is fine, fair, and good. But then she just kind of leaves them. She basically assists in the semi-destruction of the Grisha, and then says that she's going to be their savior, but she saves, she saves them from the Darkling, and then leaves them before anything is ever actually completed. And I feel like I mentioned this in another clip, but it's just infuriating because now we're seeing Grisha quite literally be maltreated. They are being forced to take a drug that is fucking them up so badly that they die from the drug or they get so addicted that they are willing to put themselves in a dangerous situation because of it. And it's just frustrating because I don't see anyone standing up for the Grisha thus far. And maybe that'll change and maybe things right now in Ravka are better than they are in Ketterdam. But it's just infuriating to have to have seen that and to have seen a protagonist such as Alina, who is the self-proclaimed savior who is supposed to change everything for the Grisha, and then have her leave them and do nothing. And l basically leave the people that she had bonded with, the people that she once was before she lost her powers, to this terrible thing. And it's it's just an infuriating thing to read and I, it's kind of, it's dampened my mood for reading the um, Six of Crows duology. But like I said, I'm only in chapter five or six, and I am, um, and I, um, it is still setting up for kind of everything, and I am in a bit of a weird reading slump. I feel like the books that I tried taking with me when I went to my business trip were the wrong choice, um, but I have to finish that probably today or tomorrow because I need to get that review out soon because that book comes out, and I feel like it just put me in a weird slump mixed with the fact that this is a kind of slow to begin with but I'm really enjoying it in terms of the characters and like they're already complex relationships I'm enjoying it and I can't wait to see how it's going to be unpacked but as of right now I think I'm just a little too jaded from the um, original Grishaverse trilogy for me to sit down and like blast through it but I will update you guys if I read more today I don't know if I will be able to not because I don't want to, but I told myself I was going to try to get a video out today and that would be my vlog. And I am only on Tuesday and that vlog goes on until Friday. So I should be able to edit most of it tonight and it should go up. 
As for closed captions, that'll go up probably tomorrow because I need to get back in the flow of vlog vlogging and editing and YouTube in general and it's taking me a hot minute because when you go from being sick and then having to go to a business trip right away, not right away, but like within a week's time, the adjustment period is non-existent. So, But I will update you guys when I get there and hopefully in like a couple of days I'll be a little bit more into the book and we can see how I'm feeling from there. Hello, it is now Thursday around lunchtime. I'm, I'm on my break and I did get a chance to read last night and there were a couple things that I had questions on mainly because it had mentioned like I feel like now that we're in Six of Crows there's a lot of mentions of science and like the specifics of science whereas I felt in the Grisha verse it was a little bit vaguer so I don't know if that was something that she added in for Six of Crows or if it's like Rafka doesn't have that knowledge just quite yet and I would like to know if that's the case because I'm a I'm a wee bit confused. Aside from that, I'm really enjoying it. Um, but also, none of y'all warned me about the scene where Kaz is torturing someone because Inej is laying dead on the floor, on like not on the floor, in a bed on a boat because she was stabbed because they were betrayed. No, None of y'all told me that. And I just ate lunch. And I don't want to throw my lunch up because it was tacos. And I quite frankly enjoy tacos going down, not coming back up. That's all I can say. Um, I love Jesper and Wylan. I feel like they're such a crackhead team. It makes me laugh because Jesper's like, I have to watch over this brat and Wylan's like, I'm not a brat. I don't need to be watched over, but everyone's like, you need to be watched over. That's all I have for updates thus far. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I think I'm like 20% of the way through, about 20%, maybe 30 so I will update you guys when I get a little further into the book. I'm, it's already like Thursday and I'm not even halfway through the book yet. It's been a rough week, you guys. <laughs> not gonna lie. So yeah, I, I should be able to read tonight. I just have to make a couple phone calls after my shift at work. Then I have to put laundry away because I haven't done that yet. And work from there. But I will update you guys when I get a chance to read some more. I just want to say that I'm shipping Kaz and an edge. I feel like I'm with everyone on that bit, so... Yeah. Okay, hello. It is now Friday lunchtime. I'm on my break. I'm waiting for my ramen to cook because that's what we do when we're self-quarantining. We eat ramen because we don't want to cook anything else. I did get to read a little bit more yesterday. Can I just say, uh, this is completely off topic, but I am just not feeling up to the whole content creating at the current moment. I f with anything really. I have been struggling to make Instagram posts. I have been struggling to sit down and write my book. I think that once I'm done with work, I'm just so exhausted from being home for like 15 plus hours. I just want to sleep it off and pretend like the day never happened. Making and vlogging content has been a little bit rough. I'm not gonna lie. And typically I don't want to talk about like these kinds of problems just because there's so much of this talk going on already. I want my channel to be like a nice reprieve from all the world. However, I am friends with some content creators so we do go through very similar like trials and tribulations all together. So I feel like if I could validate someone else's kind of feelings, oh hair please, and make them feel like they're not not necessarily to say alone because there have been other posts like this, but to kind of comfort them as well on top of like validating their emotions, then I'm I'm gonna do it. I haven't been feeling 100% up to making content. I have, I hope this video goes out on Sunday, but if not, then I will not have a video up until next Wednesday, which is fine because I'm still trying to get in the groove of things. But I do want to get back in the mode of making more videos twice a week. I'm trying to think of fun things that I can post on my channel that are easy to do and just really kind of quick and easy and simple to get through just to make things, you know, a little easier for myself because I am now working from home 24 seven until we figure out a solution. So it's, it's been rough and I, and I don't want to make content. I just kind of, for lack of better words, veg out. But I think that by not making content, I'm doing a bit of a disservice. Not to say that I get paid for this, this is 100% a hobby. I love doing this just for the sake of doing it. But I think it would be a disservice because I can sense there's a lot of anxiety in everyone and just how videos are being made and social posts that I'm seeing out. So I feel like by not doing it and not 
making posts and you know trying to offer some kind of distractions not only for myself because this uh, being able to do youtube and reading and writing is a wonderful distraction on top of it being something that i'm passionate about and is a hobby that i want i am clearly continuing but i feel like it's a little tough because i don't want to do anything i want i i, I kind of want to sit in the anxiety of waiting and not really talking to people but at the same time by not doing it i feel like i'm offering a disservice and not because i need to but because i do want to offer a distraction i want if there's anything that i can do whether it be with my books, with my channel, with my own personal self and my own goals is to be a safe place, genuinely. I, this is something that I strive for. I try to make myself as much of an open person, as much as a um, warm and caring person as I can. Don't know how well that goes, but I, I do try to create a vibe around myself that makes it so people can come to me if they need anything, if they need a distraction. And like if my YouTube videos and my books, if they shall ever be so published, can do one thing is, is that I hope that it creates a kind of distraction and a reprieve from whatever is going on in the world or your personal life. So it's been rough trying to vlog every day. Doesn't help that I have to like disassemble my camera every time now. That's been a little bit of a different transition, but it's been rough trying to be creative. And I feel like um, I could just easily sit down and just not do it and then just read and do that. But I I think I need the distraction from hearing all of this talk about what's going on. And then this panic that seems to be coming about that while necessary and it, it does something is unhelpful because all it does is create panic. And it's kind of blind panic. If for some reason my videos do come out a little less frequently or... I I don't want to say lack the energy if things are kind of like slowing down for my channel in terms of like the videos that I put out or when they come out it's because of two things one I am struggling through whatever my brain is trying to do to understand the situation so it is taking me a little bit and secondly because I'm not feeling the greatest in terms of wanting to make videos of wanting to be a productive human being which sucks because I love being productive productivity is like how I measure <laughs> not my my life per se but it's how I get through my day I like being productive it's because I haven't been filming a lot but I want the content that I put out to be the same kind of quality so it might take me a little longer to edit vlogs or to put out a non vlog related video just because it's like I want it to be good quality I want it to be something that I'm proud of to look at and something that you guys can watch and kind of get a break from and I feel like if my energy levels are low or if it feels like a crappy product that I'm product video that I'm putting out then you guys aren't gonna get the kind of reprieve that you're looking for when you're scrolling through videos or watching my videos and there's just stuff in my personal life that's going on that I'm just like I did that one to myself so it's just a lot of things but when this video goes up and hopefully it goes up I don't think I'll have this book done by Sunday I am not even like half I'm almost halfway through but that's like a while so I will probably have this video up again on Wednesday or Thursday which is fine and then we can go from there while I figure out my life that's kind of where I'm coming from and I wanted to share it in, in a video because I feel like we need some kind of validation as to everything that's going on we need something to just say like i don't know what to do with the situation i don't know how to handle the situation and that's okay because i really i i don't know what to do i don't know how to react i don't know how to do anything and my body is just like slowly like distancing itself from the situation which isn't the healthiest or my mind is distancing itself which isn't the healthiest way for me to go but i think that um by keeping myself busy and like trying to be transparent with you guys as to like why my vlog went up on thursday instead of wednesday or why this and this is happening or why i haven't posted this and this it's just gonna make things a little easier i think for myself and for potentially whatever you guys are going through because then you know that like you know what it's out there people know that what i'm feeling what i'm going through is completely normal and okay and fine because i feel like people are telling you like meditate and become a better person or like be angry at the world and i think we need to also push the stigma that it's okay to not really know how to feel and it's okay to be angry but also still torn and unsure but as for the book i'm 
I'm really enjoying it. I, now that we're on, they're on their way to break into the ice court, the book's moving a lot faster and I find myself really intrigued by the amount of layers behind every relationship. Right now, I don't know a ton about Jesper or Wylan, but I do know that Inej and Kaz have some deep-seated history. And then I also know that Nina and Matthias have a deep-seated history. So I'm excited to read more about it. I do need to read more of Orange the Priori Tree. The, the, the brick is staring at me, so I think I'll probably sneak a little bit of that tonight. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my update. I will try to have vlogging content, but also sometimes I feel like I don't have enough vlogging content and then I vlog a little too much. And then the vlogging content ends up taking up most of the room of the vlog. And I like watching people read. I truly do. But after a while, when you have like five one minute clips of someone reading quickly like speeding through the book quite literally because we speed things up it does get a little bit boring but i do like listening to the music so i do try to like give myself some space and try not to have too much content but then i worry that i don't have enough and it's like this weird anxiety thing that i don't know what to do with but i will update you guys if i get any reading done tonight i have a lot of grown-up things that i have to finish catching up on i caught up on most of it yesterday but today i have to do like the things that involve money and do that so that might take me a while because math and money and panics but until then i'll s update you guys when i get there okay i don't know why but i feel like lee bardugo has a habit of um making things repetitive i don't know i feel like this line here is repetitive a tall blonde with hazel eyes and piles of golden hair like we can probably infer that you know she has a lot of hair well probably but we definitely know that blonde and golden are kind of the same. So I feel like they could have been reworded differently. But I don't know. I've I've noticed a bit of repetition when it comes to her writing. Could just be me. It is now. I'm around and say six. So I read quite a lot after work. I think I just need to escape for a little bit from everything. And I went from about like 48% of the way through to like this much of the book left. So I could probably finish it by tonight if I am smart about my choices in life. There's a lot of things going on, like the entire thing with Nina and Matthias kind of broke my heart. Then there's some tension with Inej and um, Kaz, because I'm pretty sure Kaz is like half in love with Inej, but won't agree to, like won't admit to it. Inej has feelings for Kaz, and then Jasper's just sitting there probably getting feelings for Wylan, and I'm okay with that. And any time that Jasper and... In Nature together, Kaz gets all grumpy, and then now they're like trying to sneak in to the boat. Not the boat, the, the place, the prison, and Kaz um, fainted. I'm assuming he probably got sick or something, and then mixed with probably being in chains again or whatever. I'm still learning his past. I'm really enjoying it. I'm seeing a lot more of like the darker aspects that everyone seems to say that Six of Crows has, which is very good for me. Because I could definitely see how this is a lot more um, darker and everything. It's making me want to write a heist story. I love, love, love me a good heist story, which is why I'm very thankful that I am enjoying Six of Crows. I'm liking the layering. Like I like how there's like a different part to kind of everything. And then the, like, like that part kind of focuses on a specific set of characters. Like in the beginning, it was pretty vague. And then we got to see more layers between like Inej, Kaz, and Jasper. And then we get to see more layers with Matthias and Nina. And I think now we're heading back into like Inez, Jesper, and Kaz trio, which is very interesting because I want to learn more about Kaz and Jesper more or less, even though we know about him. I haven't learned much about Wylan. I don't recall if Wylan has a point of view. I feel like he does, but it's been a minute, so I could be really wrong. But if I, all goes well, I should be able to finish this by either tomorrow or tonight. I'm assuming it'll be tomorrow because I have like maybe another 25%, 30% of the way to go through. And I need to um, write. I need to write. <laughs> so yeah, that'll probably be the plan for the rest of the night. And then I'll update you guys if I read any more tomorrow. No, if I read any more tonight. And then tomorrow I will update you guys some more. And hopefully this vlog goes up on Sunday. But that means I have to start editing this video tomorrow.
Sunday. I got a lot of reading done last night. I ended up staying up at the, until I think like midnight or one reading the book and I finished. So let me just close the door and wrap up my thoughts for this vlog so we can go up today and I can be done with vlogging for the month. I love vlogging, I do, but like sometimes thinking of like all the new angles I have to do and like vlogging content and the thoughts that I need to put out. It's a little exhausting. So I ended up giving Six of Crows five out of five stars. I was genuinely surprised by the book. I went in, as you guys know from the previous clips, very... My expectations were pretty low, primarily because I had read the Grishaverse, and the Grishaverse was pretty much like... It was okay, and I'm sure if I had read it when I was younger, I would have enjoyed it more as like a guilty pleasure read. But as I'm older and like, I was not part of the first kind of wave of Grisha when that, that trilogy just came out, I cannot say that it would be a guilty pleasure of mine. I think that I have a couple other books that I prefer that are a guilty pleasure and will remain that way because they are slightly less problematic than what um, the Grisha verse was. However, so like I said, I went into Six of Crows with very little expectations. I was basically just trudging along through it and it wasn't until about, I, w I don't want to say halfway, but maybe up until we r meet Matthias where things had started picking up and I was trying to get more in interested by it. And by that point, I had started noticing kind of the patterns with the book where she broke it up into parts. And each little part kind of while we saw a lot of point of views in the characters' backstories through that, we definitely saw a smaller, fo more intense focus on a specific set of characters. So the beginning half was, I feel, a bit more focused on Inej and Kaz and Jasper and kind of setting that whole bank up. Then the second bit was a little bit more on Matthias and Nina. Then we got to see more of um, Wylan and Jasper, or specifically Jasper toward the end. And we continue on building up the relationships from here and there. We see there's a lot of compl complexities with each of the, the characters and their relationships within one another and kind of seeing that their motivations, while different, they are all aligned in some way, shape, or form. And even at the end, when you felt like things were going to reach a calming point, things did get thrown around and we see more changes within these the characters and a lot more kind of complexities and layering within each of them. I definitely enjoyed it, primarily because it is a lot darker and I remember if TB said it in his vlog for Grisha or if he said it in our personal DMing on Twitter. But he had said that someone had mentioned that the Grisha was a dark fantasy, which I cannot see. Grisha, I think, at baseline is a pretty chill... It's not super chill, but you can tell that um, Lee Bardugo did try to go a little darker in some aspects, like some of the deaths were a little bit more gruesome, some of the... Th she started to complexify some of the relationships toward the end and make them a little bit more darker and a little more different, but I don't think it worked. But in Six of Crows, I can definitely see where people are saying it's a darker fantasy. There are a lot of darker elements to this, not only from just the characters and their relationships, but also from their motivations and all that fun stuff. So it's definitely a step up, and I can see why everyone really loves Six of Crows over the original Grisha trilogy, because I definitely love Six of Crows over the original Grisha trilogy. I think the characters are more complex, they're a lot more fleshed out, despite it being just the first book in a duology. There is a bit of callback to six, to the original Grisha verse, but thankfully, like Cassie Clare, whose shelf is right there, Lee Bardugo, whose books are right here. I don't know how, wait, let me see if I can get a better angle. Let's go over Trace right there and there okay so yeah there she you don't have to have read um the grisha verse to understand six of crows though you won't really understand certain aspects of it as in like when they drop names like zoya genya the lance of emerald was dropped in there as well as alina Alina was dropped in there a couple times, primarily from Inez, who is a bit more religious and prays to the saints, and therefore Alina is on that list. What else can I say? The ending had me completely and utterly shook. I thought we were in the clear, I thought we were safe and we were fine and we were good, and then all this stuff happens and Inej has been kidnapped. We don't know if Wylan will ever look the same way he did before. Nina might be 
permanently addicted to a drug trying to save them and Kaz is making big decisions and what trying to save Inej but not save Inej and then he made a thing where the person responsible for killing his brother is now indebted to him and he stole stuff from him and it's a mess it's a mess and Jesper was the reason they got attacked in the first place because he has a big mouth and was trying to pay off debts and tell people that he'd be good and flush after a big job it's a mess we're a mess it's fine I am very stressed out but like I said definitely a five out of five stars for me a very surprising read considering how low my expectations were for the books. Oh yeah, I think the representation in this book also was fairly good. Um, in the original Grishaverse trilogy, we saw a lot of Caucasian characters, lots of white characters. A lot of the POCs were kind of put to the side, or they were more so treated as something they can throw away easily, or that's at least how I felt. Same thing with some aspects of the culture, like the Suli or the Sully. They were only thrown in there pretty late in the game and were treated as a kind of a mockery. So to see them um, with these characters, Inej, um, I could be very wrong because I have seen the casting. It um, looks to be South or Southeast Asian representation. Then we have Jesper, who is Zemeni, who I don't know what Lee Bardugo based Zemeni off of, but judging by it, his skin is darker, so I'm assuming that he is black. His actor is black, so. And then there's an implication that Jesper and Wylan might be on the spec, on like the LGBT spectrum. We have some disability rep with Kaz. We have representation of PTSD from Inej. And then uh, I believe there's an implication that um, Wylan is dyslexic. I know he has mentioned that he's illiterate toward the end. He's mentioned that he's illiterate toward the end that he can't read. But there have been instances or like the descriptions of it at least have mentioned that he um, you could put words in front of him and he won't really understand it. So I, I don't know if I feel like dyslexia might play a role in there, but I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to look it up and I will throw the actual thing that he if he is just illiterate or if it's like his actual dyslexia or there's another thing that kind of intersects with his ability to read I will throw that up there so yeah I think the representation in this aspect is a little better than Grisha so I really appreciate that and yeah I'm excited for I can say this with confidence but I'm excited for Cooker Kingdom which I'll be reading and vlogging next month so keep an eye out for that but that is it for my read, my reading vlog for Six of Crows. If you guys have read this book or are planning on reading this book anytime soon, I hope that maybe my opinions and thoughts have helped you out or we can fangirl about everything in the comments below. I'm hoping to have two new videos out next week. They'll be really short and easy to make and just something, um, just some recommendations for you guys. So until next time, hit like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff, and I'll talk to you guys ever else. I hope you guys are having a great week and if not, hopefully next week will be better for you. Bye!